After Steve, and Form Over Function. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Get important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for your Mac right inside Slack. Try all of Collide's features on an unlimited number of devices free for 14 days, no credit card required, at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are, or about that. We had a little technical difficulty getting off the ground tonight. Um, this is Mac Voices Live. We are live on YouTube at youtube.com slash Mac Voices TV. We have a number of our friends in the chat room. We'd love to have more of you. So if you are anywhere within the sound of my voice, come on in. And if you're not, well, then mark it down for next Tuesday. You should be here then too. A uh, number of things to get through tonight. We have uh, a number of stories that have popped up that we'd like to discuss. Um, and I'm sure that there will be some off script things like there always are. So let's go around the table, find out who's here, and then we'll get to it. Um, taking my screen, uh, which has rearranged itself after I was forced to restart, Mr. David Ginsburg is up first. David, good to have you. Good to be here. Glad you're back. We're going to have some good discussion tonight. There's, so, there's been a lot of active news this week, so it should be good. There has. Me. There has. And, and you look like you're bundled up. Uh, hasn't anybody yeah. told you it's spring? You tell, tell me that in Chicago right now because it's like going to be 35 tonight. So it's been cold. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, but actually, I think we are starting to get a spring this year where you have those cold mornings and the, and the warm, warmer days. Um, yeah, next week. They say 80 yeah. next week. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Gammon is here. Jeff, welcome. Good to have you as always. It's always great to hang out with you, Chuck. And uh, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I've uh, I missed you guys again. At least I got to see see you briefly last week. Mm -hmm. um, also with us, uh, Mr. Warren Scar, the troublemaker. Warren, good to see you. Is that my uh, is that my official handle now? Well, I think it's becoming you know, because of because of what you showed us pre show. Um, I think, yeah, that that seems to be an official. <laughs> you know. I am a little a little wacky. Uh, I'm doing good. Um, it's Tuesday. My wife is uh, currently in Boston retrieving my son to bring him back home for this summer, which is fun. And uh, that's good. Um, and then uh, we're going to start, you know, doing the half beach, half uh, Pennsylvania, uh, half New Jersey, half Pennsylvania thing in the summer. So that's starting this week, too. So that's why I can't be on Thursday's show with Dave, because I'll be in transport um i'll have to look to see if i have a microphone there well when i go um, i promise not to use that one i bought off amazon if i can still find it and uh <laughs> that was bad that, that was, was a really bad, bad microphone <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Got, it, it got great reviews so i mean yeah well, yeah all, all five reviews that were paid were great were paid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 all right well i'll i'll, I'll figure it out but well, call a call guy. He probably has a microphone or two. He might he might be able to spare one. <laughs> um, I don't know. He he kind of uh he he, he named them all and you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know if he's gonna give them up. Oh god, that's a frightening thought. But yes, yes I, it I, is. I think he does well, I was, name his I was kind of I was gonna go with putting them in the bed with him and sleeping with them too, but I didn't go there. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> this one's Betsy. That, that's a more. That's a, this one's Veronica. Uh, well, I mean, and, it, and, and this uh, one's Jackie. I don't think it's a. She's it wouldn't be. A, it's not sexual. It's going to be like you know, like fifty cats in somebody's bed instead of cats with microphones and guy. So it's guy with just microphones all over the bed like cats. Okay. And, and the fact that, yeah, the fact that Jeff had all those names on right on command is a little disturbing too. But we're, we're going to go right past that and introduce yeah. Jim Ray. And, and this Jim's Chuck. Uh, but <laughs> Jim, thank God you're here. <laughs> Save us. It's a new one. They're, they've they've started already. I mean, I I'm so glad you're here. I really am. Oh man. So, guys, a number of things. Um, you know, I threw out in the in the in our private Slack to talk about a little bit. I want to throw the first one into the YouTube chat room, and then I'll throw it also over here into our, our Slack, or excuse me, our private chat here, as soon as I can find it. 
There it is. Uh, a new book just out today that's been getting a lot of coverage um, about Apple after Steve Jobs um, and talking about you know why why and how Johnny Ive left and uh, a number of other things. I obviously have not read it yet because it literally just came out today as we're publishing this, but there've been plenty of excerpts and plenty of discussion of it. Um, especially interesting, I think, is the, the, the comments, or the, excuse me, the excerpts we've seen about Johnny Ive and his decision to, to leave, um, apparently being a bit at odds with Tim Cook over the way the Apple Watch was introduced or to be introduced and, you know, services versus products and all those things. Uh, how many of you have had a chance to look at any of this and do you have any thoughts on what we were seeing? I started reading it. Good. You got, you got it already. Good for you. Well, Kindle, I, I ordered it a few days ago and this morning I got an email saying we charged your card. And so I looked on my iPad and sure enough, there it was. So I read some of it because I figured we might talk about it, but I haven't gotten very far. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it may be a little bit premature, but um, yeah. just the fact that, that the part about Johnny um, I think is really very interesting. Um, right. That Oh, go ahead more. No, I just, I read a couple of the ex excerpts of it and, the part I find really interesting is I talked about Johnny Ive with uh, Steve Jobs. Um, and the part I read that was cool is uh, the, the story of Steve Jobs and Johnny Ive are researching a product or something like that, or I don't forgot what it was. And Steve Jobs comes in all, all uh, upset and hot in the early days of him and John, Johnny Ive. And Johnny Ive says, Steve, you, this is like he said something like I'll, I'll pull it up but this is uh you, you're you got to think of next version of this or something to that effect and steve job calmed down he put his arms around him and that was their friendship and th i mean i think they had a pretty i think he really liked steve jobs uh obviously uh johnny Ive did um that they show you know him like they talked about him for like a year after he died like really just kind of moping around the office and um so yeah, I mean, uh, hey, I like Johnny Ive um, too, so I'm interested. I don't read a lot, so I'll wait for the movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> or maybe okay. the audio book. <laughs> you know, after reading some of the articles that uh, talk about the the book and the you know the whole Johnny Ive thing, my take is that people are looking to create drama. And I'm not seeing like big drama here. What I'm seeing is what happens every time you have a, uh, a significant change in senior management at a company, you have some people where that transition goes smoothly and other people where it just doesn't fit with them anymore. And I think the transition from Steve Jobs to, to Tim Cook uh, running the company in their own ways, that just didn't fit with with Johnny anymore, and so he became uh, uh, frustrated. He didn't enjoy his job anymore, and eventually he left. And that's just something you see all the time in uh, in companies. It's, I mean, that's just a thing. Jeff, I agree with you 100% on that. I guess what intrigued me about some of this, and I think you're right. You know, there's a bit of clickbait here. There's no question about it or book bait or if that's if that's even a term. But it is now. It is. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> uh, but the idea that, um, you know, because we've had plenty of discussions about, you know, the way that Apple's products under Johnny were going, that they seem to be uh, approaching much more form over function. And that since Johnny has left, uh, it seems like it's it shifted back the other way. And so that's one of the reasons I'm in, I'm intensely interested in this book to see just what it says, because, you know, allegedly it examines, you know, some of those things and the the not conflict, but I guess the disagreement over the way things were going with Tim Cook. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to digging more into that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I it. it 
it would be interesting, and there's no way we can do it, of course, to know what the M1 Max at, at any level would have looked like had Johnny stayed on. You know, would we have fewer ports? Would, you know, we, we probably definitely wouldn't have the ports we have right now in the MacBook mm-hmm. Pros. So, oh, no. Gosh, no. The, you know. the big question is, who's going to play Johnny Ive in the movie that I'm about to watch? <laughs> Um, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but I've already been contacted about that. Nice. You got too much hair. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. The, the, haven't you, you heard of wear CGI? A skull cap. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's somebody, you know, like uh, Austin Kutcher did uh, Steve Jobs, and uh, so did uh, Michael, what's his name, um, in the movie, uh, the play of the movie. Um, so oh, there was a number of them. <laughs> no. Yeah. The, there were three... Movies or TV shows where somebody plays Steve Jobs, and I remember there was well, uh, Aston Kutcher played one. Played him, Aston Kutcher was one. one, and then um, the guy from ER with the uh, Silicon Valley, no, O'Wiley. Noah Wiley, Noah Wiley. Noah Wiley. That's and right. then the last one's uh, Pirates of Silicon Valley, no, uh, and the last one, uh, uh, just called Jobs with uh, um, come on, with Magneto, yeah, that's him, yeah, I forget his name. Uh, the guy who plays Magneto, uh, Kissin, I'll look it up because, anyways, um, and they were good. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, somebody, somebody bald and famous needs to play the new Steve Jobs in the movie. Bruce That's Willis. interesting. The, Bruce the first 20 or 30 I don't pages, think Bruce will be doing any uh, acting anytime soon, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like they could do like an action scene with him and Tim Cook, you know. With, <laughs> <Yeah, bro. laughs> Jim, you were saying? Uh, oh, yeah, I wasn't sure if my mic was working. Yeah. Um, uh, it's interesting. The first 20, 30 pages of the book that I've read has been kind of centered around Steve Jobs. And I realized, oh, that was kind of weird. You know, I really haven't thought about Steve Jobs, you know, day to day for a long time. You know, it's it's been, what, 11 years. And, um, you know, it was kind of, you know, we're so used to it, but then now it's been so long that we, you know, at least I don't really think about that. And gosh, you know, you talk about what, a, how would the M1 Max be different without Joni Eve? What would Apple be like? You know, presumably Steve Jobs, I think he'd be 67. He'd probably still be working. Um, and what would that history look like? Who knows? I mean, no, you know. And 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 what's next? You know, Tim Cook's. You know, there 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 was discussion about how Tim, you know, Steve picked Tim and why, and things that he did to get the other executives to to not leave right away. And 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 there was discussion about other companies that where founders had left, like Walt Disney, you know, Disney and Polaroid, and uh, and apparently Steve was interested in that, and you know looked at those examples as, you know, pro or con as to what he wanted to happen at Apple. And now we're, you know, we're, we're probably getting pretty close to where there's going to be another transition. And, you know, maybe Apple's going to, you know, he, he didn't want it to become like a regular corporation, but maybe now we're at the point where that's probably what the next, you know, transition is going to be there's not going to be any of the original team around and whoever is going to be in charge is not going to be from that era hmm. yeah it's it's definitely yeah. i mean i we've said this on the show so many times you know that we don't want to look back too much you know we, we invoke steve's name way too much i think um because you know it's just impossible to know you know this many years later what steve would have done what would have happened this this feels a little more like recent history and it feels like something that really has affected on a much more immediate basis the products we're seeing now and what what appears to be a change in the uh in the design um philosophy of of apple that is known for its design in its products This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Get important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for your Mac right inside Slack. Collide sends employees important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for their Linux, Mac, and Windows devices right inside Slack. 
Some companies try to lock down their employee devices, which is great for security, but terrible for productivity and usability. Collide has a better way. Collide knows that end users are IT admin's most significant untapped resources and the key to solving the most challenging security issues, including instructing developers to set passphrases or unencrypted SSH keys, finding plain text two-factor backup codes and teaching end users how to store them securely, and convincing employees to uninstall evil browser extensions that may sell their browser history. Those are just some of the many use cases that are not solved by locking down devices. You can try Collide with all its features on an unlimited number of devices for 14 days, free, no credit card required. Visit collide.com slash macvoices to sign up today. That's Collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Try all of Collide's features on an unlimited number of devices for 14 days, free, no credit card required. And be sure to enter your email when prompted to receive your free Collide gift bundle after trial activation. That's collide.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for supporting this week's Mac Voices. Well, that's so, what I was going to say real fast, too. Is with with um, Johnny Ive and Steve Jobs, they were design design first company, I think. And that when, you know, people would say they want this or this kind of functionality, Steve would say people don't know what they want until they see it. And that's what he did. Um, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of history with thinness and ports, right? We're, that's what basically Johnny Ive is going to be thinness and ports. That's his legacy, right? He wants things to be small and, and small, nice looking and pretty much hermetically sealed as, as a unit. And that's what he strive for. And the, um, the, you know, the lap, believe me, if Johnny Ives was still here, the laptops would go in that direction. And instead of getting the 16 inch thing that we got with all those bigger and more ports, it would be maybe even smaller with less ports. And, but, you know, probably better looking. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure better looking. Not that the 16 inch uh, and the new 14 are bad, but, you know, comp- I think they're personally the uglier than the previous gen. Um, the new ones because they're again they're a little bulkier they're bigger and the ports they don't look good ports don't look good so um you know it's how much a company is going to listen to their customers wishes and how much they think that they're wrong and or they're right and what we're going to do about it and that's the direction apple went is going so without that they got tim cook now i don't even you don't really hear about their design you know we don't get a lot we don't get a lot of design stories like we used to get right with johnny ive is designing this designing that and designing that we don't get that uh tim they're a numbers and services company now they're not really caring that much about the design of these products and you know uh basically they say as long as you have the product we want to put a service on it and that's, that's fine. That's what they're doing, but designs an afterthought. Would it be nice to get another Johnny Ivish person in there or somebody who gets into that point and convinces Tim Cook, this is our roots. This is how we got where we are. Let's start going back in that direction. You know, it's going to depend on how much the public pushes back. Yeah. I don't, I I don't think, wow. Design is an afterthought. Yeah, now, I, was just, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, now, yeah. yeah, nowadays, I don't a, think so. No, oh, really. So, <laughs> again, with the the new Max, and I'm sure they said to themselves, We want to release the Satan, these 14 and 16 inch Max, not thicker <laughs> than they are because they don't want they don't like that. They decided they made a decision. They said we're going to put the list on there. We're going to make it bigger. Yeah, but to go from that to say design is an afterthought. I they said afterthought. I said uh, to be fair. I said is not their top priority. It's down the list. That was in the article. That one was was, wasn't. You know what is it? David, do you? I mean, I'm I'm kind of I think with with you and uh, Jim that I'm not sure afterthought. You know, it's it's an adjustment maybe a back toward something a little more, I hesitate to say practical, but that's the only word I have. 
Yeah, they uh, twiddle the knobs a little bit. Yeah, practice yeah. is a good word. Um, it, it's it's obvious Tim's vision is isn't focused on design as it was as as, Dave, as Steve's was. So I mean that that you don't hear a lot about design nowadays with Apple. I mean they do they do design them and they do put whatever they can. But Warren's right with these with the Macs. I mean the Macs have gotten a lot a lot thicker. A lot, I mean I don't think Johnny Ive would put a would approve the way these new MacBook Pros are now. They're very square. They're where you know again they have more Public ports. Look. Public yeah. loves it, yeah. So, but, but public still loves them because so that's it. M1, it's always going to be they're fast first yeah. company's design. It's always going to really, be function. It's always functionality over form, right? That it, that's right. The base of the article, uh, the argument is form over functionality, and it's well, a balance. No. Yeah, I mean that debate always goes on, and I want to bring the chat room in here. Um, first of all, on the on who plays Johnny Ive, um, Barry said Jason Stratham. Interesting choice, um, but uh, Bob says even with without Ive, Apple's products still look good. Eric says less Ive, more ninety sensibility for the Mac. Um, Bob Beach uh, says his iPhone thirteen is a thing of beauty, and um, Brian make Brian says makes you wonder if you if you'd see the Mac Studio look more like the cylinder Mac Pro if Ive was still designing. I'm going to go with no on the cylinder design. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, the look iPhone, at the, and the iPhone looking as good as it did, you know, a while ago, it hasn't changed that much. Right. I mean, that's a bad example. Well, yeah. none yeah, of the designs, none of the, except for the iMac, well, the M1 iMac, none of my the, the, well, nothing has changed was, radically. Was no. Steve Jobs around when the new shape and form of the iPhone came out? Not quite right. He died in 2012. 11. 12, iPhone, 11. So, iPhone so, 4S. 4S. Um, so which he, that was he, something interesting. The book, I had never heard before. Apparently, inside Apple, they referred to the 4S as the 4 Steve uh, phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I knew he was gone. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, he wasn't gone yet. It, it was like announced like the day before he died, apparently, that because they were talking about. That he watched it from his bed, and wow. um, Joni hmm. Eve wasn't at the announcement because um, he was at Steve's house, hmm. and they apparently had a a chair reserved for him at the announcement. Uh-huh. Yep, I remember that. Hmm. Hey, um, Guy Searle heard that uh, that Warren needs a mic, and he decided to join us. <laughs> Need a mic? <clears throat> I I threatened to use the one I bought off Amazon next week, and they got mad. Don't at me. don't use that. <laughs> they said, they said, <laughs> they said you're going to give me one. So, a consensus. So. I did not bad, commit bad to anything. Bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll eat it. It's good. Uh, it's, there there was never a bad microphone. I will throw that one away. <laughs> Guy, we're talking about the um, after Steve book um, and the excerpts that are that are out there now. <clears throat> Jim's the only one that's had a chance to read any of it. Um, because it just came out today. Have you been paying any attention to this? Yeah, I've seen some. I've seen some of the stuff going on about that. Um, f- frankly, the whole argument of Steve Jobs wouldn't do what Apple is doing now just it it it's irrelevant. It it honestly it doesn't even matter because Apple Apple is doing just fine. They're doing fine with Cook at the helm. They're doing fine with uh, Johnny Ives having departed the company. They've they've been rolling on all cylinders for a while. And, you know, honestly, as far as Ives goes, I think in a lot of ways he was holding the company back with some of the design choices that that he had made and kind of uh, fostered on everyone else. And, um, you know, hey, thanks for everything that you've done, Johnny. But I'm quite happy that we have a Mac studio with more ports and is as, you know, tall as a, as a brick poop house as compared to, you know, the stuff that, that you would have made. I'm fine with the fact that iMacs are no longer, you know, razor thin because who the hell cares about a razor thin desktop computer? Same thing with the laptops. If you have to give me a thicker laptop in order for me to have better functionality, I'm okay with that. Sorry, so have you, seen, have you seen the new iMac? Just asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is. 
It's, <laughs> I it's, I don't it's know how much thinner that one's going to be. They've ever made. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. Guy, guy thinks yeah. it's too thick. Um, <laughs> the studio display is not that thin. I was in an Apple store yesterday, and I was like, yeah, that, that thing's yeah, pretty so. boxy. I mean, it looks nice. They had to put a processor but, in there somewhere. But, so I, you know, I'm to totally with Guy. These are, I'm, I am purchasing functional objects. You know, this is not a piece of fine art. If I want a piece of fine art, I'll buy a piece of fine art. And, um, and you know what? And to, to put a finer point on that, when Steve Jobs came back to the company, they needed something that was going to distinguish them from other computer companies because they were selling a product that wasn't the same as what everybody else was selling. Everybody else was buying Windows computers. So if you're going to buy a computer that's going to be different, that's going to offer a, a different experience, well then, okay, you make it a different looking computer. So then the iMac is born and some of the other choices that they made in the late 90s and the early 2000s. But then once the iPhone came out and Apple was no longer, actually go farther back than that, once the iPod came out, and Apple was no longer a one-trick pony, well, then how, how the damn computer looked became less and less relevant. I, I just, I, you know, I, I just didn't care after a while. That's Here, here's a, just real fast, too. Also, there's a big difference between Steve Jobs coming to see the company now and not liking what he's seeing be between that and Steve Jobs seeing the evolution of the 10 years of how they got there. And I think that's a big difference of what people think. You know, if Steve Jobs was still alive and, you know, was through the company to now, it's not like he's going to leave a, a different direction. And every, no, no CEO is kind of like what the company has done since then, 10 years without, without them. seeing the past. Yeah. Without seeing how they got to where they are. And, you know, that's a, you know, you take a creator and, and, and somebody who's very creative and, and built his company and put them, you know, odd years in the future and it sees that they're trying to make money. Things, things are different yeah. when you see the progression of it. The chat room is talking about uh, Bob says it's a balance between form and function agreed. And I began to err too much on the side of form. Um, yeah, I think, I, 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 I think most of us would agree with that. Um, they've also compared the studio to, you know, should the studio maybe have been a little more like the G4 Cube, which is an interesting thought. You know, in some ways it is. It, in some ways it is. Mm -hmm. In some ways it is. It's not quite it's as sexy looking, taller, but it is. It is definitely taller. Um, and you know, they they decided to go that way instead of a tower or something that is a little more PC like. I mean, technology is different too. They were able to cram in a lot more ports in the in the in the studio than they were, uh, you know, the G4 Cube. I mean, it was it was you know, technology changed. It kind of looks like the same size as the original iMac. It doesn't like the it resembles it because the iMac the the original iMacs weren't that thin. If you remember, they were right, you know, plastic. -y, yeah. right? They were plastic and pretty pretty big. You're talking about the studio monitor now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The studio yeah, monitor. Said, studio I monitor. Think that's how we got to it. Kind of, I, I was mean, talking about the Mac Studio. I'm sorry, with the port. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, the Mac yeah. Studio. Sorry. About, yeah. No, yeah. but the monitor was also. Um, you said you saw in the store, and it's got like you know, it's pretty big in the back. And whether Steve well, or Johnny would like that or not, but then again, their first it's Mac. It's not big in the came. back, but it's it's not it's it's like twice the thickness of the iMac. It, yeah, it's flat yeah, on the I, back, so it doesn't too. have a bulge like the recent iMacs did. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's the requirement of the technology that it's that it has to be thicker. Well, I, I think it's probably because it um, <clears throat> doesn't have an external power brick. So they had to get the power supply in there. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. But the I, I mean, same with the I don't. Yeah. Every the IMACs don't have a, a brick. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. They have a power brick. The sure. IMAX because that's where you, that's where you plug in the Ethernet. Right. <clears throat> But uh, the new ones do, the older ones. Yeah, don't. the older ones had the plug, right? The older ones right. did not, right? The older right, ones did the, not have the, the power supply. The, the current iMac. The powers, but the powers, that's what I'm saying. That was pretty damn thin, too. And the power supply was in that monitor on the uh, previous gen iMacs. Right. They so could have done the, it. The they could have made it thinner. The iMac was a lot thicker than the current iMac. Right. But yes. The, but the previous gen iMac 
is a lot thinner than the current Pro Studio. Mm -hmm. So right there's that I design don't think choice. it is. It's thinner on the edge, but in the middle, it's quite a bit thicker. Okay. The 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 new Pro Studio is about a half inch deep, but it's flat, so it's a half inch deep the whole way. The previous generation IMAX they tapered to a very thin edge, so they kind of looked. From most angles, they looked very thin, but if you looked at them on the side, they, you yeah, know, they got the bulge. Yeah. They had the bulge. So this this mm -hmm. Mac Studio display doesn't have a bulge. It it kind of looks like a iPad that you just magnify it in every direction. I think we're all just hoping the Studio display is going to do something really really cool in the future that we don't know it's about mm -hmm. to do. By the way, have... I played with photo photo booth on the the Studio display, and I, the camera seemed fine to me. They did another oh, update. Probably, there, was, there was another firmware upgrade. Today. There was a firmware yeah. update today. Another a second one? Yeah, mm -hmm. this week. And the article I read said it's a little better. So, right. That's, I mean. <laughs> that was today. Mm -hmm. they, they were, they're saying it got a little better last week with that beta. And today they're like, well, it's hey, also I, now um, a little bit know, better. I'll, because, I'll be, because real fast in between, there was a lot of people writing saying, uh, boo, the, for, this is a, the hardware thing and it can't be fixable, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, now they came out with this and people were like, well, it it does look a little better. So maybe there's hope. You know, I didn't check this, but I'm going to guess that whatever is running in the Apple store is not a beta. I would agree with that. Oh, yeah. I would definitely. Agree with that. Yeah, just before before we move on, because we're beating this to death. Um, but you know, there there was an interesting point there that a design choice was made for the the M1 iMac to take the power brick out and make right. it really really thin. So I mean, it's a great looking machine, and you know, does the power brick being on the floor or wherever you put it um, is that a problem? You know, I I don't think so. It's maybe not quite as convenient, but on the other hand, it allows it to be thin. It allows it to be light. Yeah. So there was you a design me, choice made there. I think I would have went with a thicker monitor, not to have the brick. Well, that, you know, that's you. And, you know, I mean, again, that, that's it. You can't have it both ways. You know, somebody has right. to make a decision. They made that decision. And so, and now, you, know, sure you know, that was obviously a very deliberate thought about decision because they had to go to this magnetic attachment for that 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 you know they've never used or as far as i know anyone has ever used anywhere else it's kind did of did they actually have to or i mean again they that had was... to because you cannot the thing is so thin that you can't have a regular plug it's not thick enough for a power plug and that's why Literally the headphone the... jack comes in from the edge Right. Because I mean, it also the body is plug. too thin to have the the plug uh, fit. I Seven think I would have rather had a thicker iMac Seven with the... just regular plugs and all the rest of that than Six. to force that kind of aesthetic on a basic desktop computer. And you notice we haven't seen a 27-inch, and we probably never will, with at least not in monitors. this generation. Some new monitors have, uh, instead of the big plug, they have the, uh, like, this one here has the RCA. I forget what they call it, but the, uh, it's a small, like, it's a tiny plug that goes into the monitor. Um, and so, well, I mean, I, no, I, I don't know if, I'm sure it's definitely could be done, but I guess the I, question. I would is, say that that computer is evidence that the Joni I philosophy is not completely gone. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I and that's agree. and that's not a that's not a bad thing unless no, I mean, he that, had unless he had a hand in designing it before he left, which is also yeah. possible. But that's that's also why the Ethernet plug has to go into the power brick, is because it's it's not deep right. enough for an Ethernet jack, standard Ethernet jack. So you know, and it's a desktop computer. So why 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 even force a choice like that? Why can't power be wireless? Okay, oh, Tesla. Going there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going there, Warren. I mean, Welcome to physics. Johnny Ive is going to be happy when I get a computer or a monitor that I just pull out and put down somewhere and turn it on and don't plug it into anything. There, there, there's and, some and, physics and, issues. That's your that iPad. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that my iPad? Good one, Jeff. Good one. Um, you know, 
This Mac Voices Live panel is back in the next edition of Mac Voices to talk more about the form over function debate, what their preferences are, and what it means for Apple's future. That's next time on Mac Voices, and I hope you'll join us then. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.